the buzz on the spin. Miz, Vriz, Liz, Ziff, Deriz, and Zier. The sextuplets were his escorts for the rest of the day. Hopefully, they would have a fairly boring protection detail. Most Charbies were born in small batches of three, so having a batch of six was as rare as twins in humanity. They were out with banger rifles and ablator pistols with knives tucked away in pockets. However, the bigger concern isn't the amount of weapons so much as the fact that fully primed bangers, a weapon that's occasionally known to go off by accident, are being pointed at everything that moves in sight. So he hurries up and makes it to Nightside where the gang was last seen. The sooner this is knocked off and finished up, the sooner a lot of problems can be swept away. Not to mention he needs to head off and discourage whatever their next bit of stupidity is. If these people had no plan for a hostage negotiation to end in a flat no, then they will likely do something else stupid. So, do you think they'll fight? Miz asks, hovering right next to him. Maybe a couple profiles are clearly fakes and the ones we do have paint a violent picture. You don't earn a nickname like the Gore sisters by being cuddly. He remarks plainly, and the girls do a quick weapons check. The girls outright dip in the air as the doors open to nightside. The sudden shift from warm and homey country afternoon to seedy inner city night hits everyone hard. Hoagie can outright feel the girls around him shift their own mental and physical patterns as their bodies use Axiom to do so. Is everyone all right? He asks, and they start buzzing even more energetically than normal to compensate for the momentary lapse. We're fine, hubby. We're here to protect you. I'm human. The protection is mutual zeer. He chides her, and she looks away with a slight grin. Touch of romance, sordid Hoagie leads them out into the dark shadows and neon lights of Nightside. It's a much busier part of the station, and so they all fly in close to form a barrier around him. It takes all of three seconds before someone gets hit with the barrel of a banger and scampers away from the furious Sharby. In hopes of avoiding unnecessary trouble, Hoagie pulls up a map of where their current rented rooms are and nods to himself before gathering Axiom into his legs. Going up. His jump partially catches the girls by surprise, but he's barely reached the next level when they catch up. Two more. His next jump isn't a surprise and they keep pace with ease, and he bounds all the way to the right level. There's a sudden blast and a scattering of civilians as one of his wives opens fire. The lower energy plasma splashes against an invisible barrier and reveals a Tret woman whose goggle-eyed expression tells Hoagie that she's massively off balance. He reaches for his Luger, but before he can do more than draw the weapon, a barrage of banger blasts crash against her energy shield, and she runs screaming as it shatters. An augmented energy shield? Someone was looking for trouble. Dura's notes with her banger following the thoroughly terrified woman. She runs into a building, and the Sharbi keeps up her vigil. I didn't even sense it, Hoagie admits with wide eyes. He had missed something something important. If she had gotten close enough, she could have knifed him and he wouldn't know until the blade was in his neck. I wasn't sure, Liz replies. I felt, I don't know, there was something though. Yeah, some tret bitch with a fancy new toy, Durese says. Good call, Liz, time to go. Wait, weren't you looking for a tret? Vriz asks Hoagie, who shakes his head. Not that one. We're after Mona Blaze, not whoever the hell that was. Hoagie replies, he then points in the opposite direction. We're going the other way. Good instincts, though. Paranoia well and truly ramped up. Hoagie starts stalking towards his goal, standing on the absolute edge of the walkway so that if someone tries something, he can jump away or fall away as needed. It takes barely a heartbeat to get the axiom needed to stick any kind of landing, so having so much open space to retreat to is just wise. It also gives his wives more room to maneuver as well. The Shadeway Apartments. Homes for rent. No spyware guaranteed. Miz reads out before snorting. I didn't know the signs here get sarcastic. 
I've spent way too much time in Section 4. If they were to take out the N.O., I assume they'd be a fair bit more honest in their advertisement. Hoagie answers and there's some laughter as they walk into the reception. The receptionist actually does a double take before taking in the fact that he's wearing an obnoxiously bright shirt, bright shirt, and the surrounding Sharbis ready for war. Aren't you the... Oh no, she whispers as Hoagie walks up and smiles. Hello, I need an access card for Pod 92. Why? The idiots there are bringing attention to the station and are partially responsible for millions in damages and lost production. I'm letting the fools know that the bills are going up and staying up until they've made restitution, he says, and she stares at him. He pulls out his station administration credentials and she stares at them for a bit and then back to him. Weren't you the one set on fire earlier? The receptionist asks slowly. Yes. Oh, all right, lady. He's got the authority. He's got the guns and I've got no damn patience for bitches disrespecting my man. Cough up the card or eat hot plasma. Vriz snarls with her banger right in the receptionist's face. Calm down, Vriz. She's overwhelmed and plasma will not make the situation any easier, Hoagie says, reaching over and carefully guiding the weapon away from the receptionist. A laser is a much more stable toy. Sure it will. It'll get her to do what we want her to now, not... Vriz protests and is cut off as the receptionist holds up a key card for them. Thank you, ma'am, Hoagie says, taking the card. Come on, girls. Let's not give the poor woman a heart attack. No doubt she has a hard enough day in front of her. Bless your gentle. She begins and the girls all point their bangers at her. She ducks under her desk in terror. No messing with our man. Dura's shouts and Hoagie sighs as he just walks out of the room. Keep up, girls! Hoagie calls after them and they quickly leave the poor woman alone and follow him out. Thankfully, Pod 92 isn't too far up. They entered near the top of the building and so were taking advantage of the multi-tiered state of the city. After all, if there's more than one main entrance, then you need a receptionist at each one. Remember, defense, not offense. We're being watched, so keep things on the moral side of things. How is being defensive moral? Letting someone hit you first isn't a good thing. By which I mean, don't start the fight, finish it. Hoagie answers and they seem to be a little confused for a moment. But the person starting the fight defines the fight right. Aren't they the ones that usually win? Ending the fight usually means being the first one to attack. Yes and no. There's a fine balancing act. There are entire martial art styles based around being the second one to attack. That sounds stupid. Yes, it does. Hoagie agrees. Still, we need to... We need to be intelligent about this and not stupid noble, as if being stupid is somehow noble. Vriz says getting into Hoagie's way and then being a little surprised as he keeps walking, plucking her out of the air and holding her as he does so. This gets an involuntary giggle out of the Sharby before she swats him in the head. Hey, no amount of male goof will get you out of this. We need a plan. Well, you girls keep your weapons on them the whole time and I pretend to be nice and friendly. They give us shit and you girls open up with the bangers and I get out of harm's way while getting a weapon out. You girls turn on the shield belts and then we reduce them to burnt chunky bits and then we steal all their stuff in compensation. That sound good? It does, Vriz says, climbing up him and then taking off to start buzzing after him. He stops in front of Pod 92. They take up positions around him and he knocks on the door after the girls scoot to the side to stay hidden from the view camera. After a few moments, the camera activates and looks down on him. He shows his credentials and there's a pause. Station command, open the door. We paid for complete privacy. A synthesized voice answers. Open the door or I'm breaking it. We need to talk. Hoagie answers. Are you the crazy man that carved a door open? Words getting out, huh? Hoagie asks in return. What do you want? I'm here to inform you of a few things and I prefer to do it face to face, he answers. 
Can't you do it through the door? Yeah, but I want to see the look on your face. Also, I want to be able to shoot you if you do something stupid. What? Did I stutter? This door is going to be open in 10 seconds, either by you or by me. And you know how I open doors, lady. This is completely 10. I will not be 9. Hoagie continues bringing out the laser cutter. Okay, okay. Give me a second. You have 8, he answers. There's the sound of unlocking from the other side. 7. The door opens to reveal a panicked-looking Tret woman just staring at him. A perfect match for Mona Blaze. Excellent. Come on, girls. Time to deliver the news. Who are they? Mona demands as Hoagie's wives follow him in. My wives. They're rather fond of me, so they tend to send out search parties or protection detail when they think I might be in danger. He says blandly, even as he spots Mira Catspaw glance around a corner and then duck away. Are they wrong? Um, she has no idea how to answer that deliberately loaded question. Good answer. Now fetch the rest. The Gore sisters especially. I know they were the supposed brains behind your recent screw-up. Who are the... Don't play with me, woman. I know that you, Mona Blaze, the arsonist. Mira Catspaw with a clearly fake identity, Teresa Skim, who tried to bury her crimes under pointless minutia, are here with the Gertha sisters, Abigail, Ariana, and Alice. Fetch them. The... The sisters are out getting groceries, Mona tries. Are they? When are they expected to return, Hoagie presses. Later today? We don't have a set time. Where are they getting them? Somewhere in Section 4, Mona replies as Mira returns with Teresa and they both peer around a corner. I got this hubby, Doris says, bringing out her communicator. Hey girls, we're looking for three Lutrin. Last name, Gertha, and they have the nickname the Gore Sisters. Tell them that they're wanted back at their apartment ten minutes ago before things get unpleasant. Perhaps a lighter touch? Hoagie asks, holding out his hand for the communicator. It's handed to him, no protest. Girls, calm down. I have a few other plans, although I do love the get-up-and-go attitude. I'm going to get some more official, stick-the-boot-in help. You don't have to put yourselves in danger. But I want the hive safe, he says, turning their words back around on them. Oh, damn you, Daniel. Oh, what's your plan? Zabreza asks him. I'm thinking that I call the station command to put their faces all over Section 4 to tell them to get over here. We have override control of the lights, speakers, and billboards. We can make them come here without a single gun being raised. Public humiliation and shame? Essentially? That's evil. I love it. Zabreza purrs at him and he chuckles. Love you too. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to use my own communicator to organize our little hazing ritual, he says before handing the communicator back to Duriz.